Before you begin to make your impression, or even before you begin to border mold, make sure that your custom tray is properly made. Your handle should be relatively unobtrusive. It should be oriented basically in line with the lips. It should not be pointing horizontally. It will pull the lip out and distort the vestibule. Make sure that you've got several millimeters of space between the height of the vestibule or the depth of the vestibule and the edge of the tray. That allows room for the compound that you use to, to mold. And make sure that you've got room for the frenal attachments both in the, in the buckle area and in the labial flange area. When you look at the tray from the side you should see that the, the flange of the, the custom tray is closely adapted to the residual ridge. Shouldn't be a big space in this area here. Lastly at the very back the denture should be extended to the very back of the cast where you drew your vibrating line. It shouldn't lap over the land area and it shouldn't be short of either the hamular notches, the tuberosities or the vibrating line. This tray is too short of the hamular notches. The frenal area is a little bit wide. Too much spacer has been used on this tray. You can see how far away the tray is from the tissue. You might as well use a stock tray if your custom tray is going to be that far away from the tissue. This tray is too thick. The back edge is going to cause the patient to gag and because the flanges are so so thick you're going to find that it's distorting or pulling out the vestibule as well. This tray is short of the retromolar pads. That's not going to work. You'll need to make a new tray or make an addition. Trying to add compound to the back of the tray here is going to be extremely difficult. You'd be better off extending the tray with some acrylic. The handle on this tray is pointing horizontally. That's going to pull the lip out and distort the vestibule. This tray is overextended. It's extended right to the very depth of the vestibule. There's no room to add compound. When you do, you'll end up overextending the peripheries. Check these aspects of your custom tray on the diagnostic cast and adjust and smooth any areas that require modification before you try the tray interorally. When you try the tray interorally, insert it sideways and rotate it into proper position. You'll find this technique makes placement of the tray or dentures much easier. The edges of the flanges should not touch the peripheral roll of the vestibule. Check for clearance. Check both the buckle and the labial frena to ensure no contact during functions. Pull on the lips and cheeks to simulate function and ensure proper clearance. The tray should not displace from the tissues while you manipulate them. If it does, shorten or thin the flange. The posterior border of the tray should terminate in the hemular notches and on the non-movable portion of the soft palate, the area of the vibrating line. Check your tray extension by marking the posterior edge of the tray with an indelible stick. Dry the mucosa so the indelible mark will transfer clearly. Then place the tray interorally. The indelible mark will transfer to the tissue. Have the patient say, ah, the line should not move. If it does, the tray is too posterior. Uh, say okay. again. Uh, hmm? That's yeah, okay. Okay. Say ah again. Uh, ah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Trim your tray flanges and the posterior border of the tray so they are properly extended. Then smooth and round the edges. The tray is now ready for border molding.